Close your eyes. Focus on the breath. Watch the breath as it comes in, as it goes out. There's nothing else you have to pay attention to now, for right now. Just anything else that comes through the mind, just let it go passing by. You're going to stick with the breath. The mind needs to be trained, and this is the best way to train it, is to give it something to do, something consistent to do right here in the present moment. So it gets used to being in the present moment, and so it can watch itself, what's it, what it's doing, what's going on. On our own, we might not have thought about how useful it would be to watch the breath, but we've learned from the people who have gone before us. This is why it's always good to think about the goodness that people have left behind, the teachings they've left behind, because this is how human beings develop. We're not like animals. Animals are born and their parents tell them a little bit and then they're off on their own. There's nothing much that gets passed down or added to over the generations. Both human beings, we have human culture. And the question is, which culture are we going to be following? Because there are all kinds of cultures. There's the culture of greed and there's a culture of aversion and there's a culture of delusion. But Lumbo always suggested that we follow the culture of the noble ones, the noble ones who delight in developing good qualities of the mind and delight in abandoning unskillful qualities of the mind. That's a tradition that's worth passing on, because that's a tradition that keeps us as human beings, keeps society, keeps culture as a culture, something worth passing on, something worth maintaining. So when you think of those who passed away, like Lumbu passed away nine years ago, and other people who passed away, think about the goodness they left behind, the lessons they taught us, because that's what keeps us as human beings. And in Lumbu's case, he often talked about coming up here to the monastery as a quiet corner. So we should all develop a quiet corner, but it's not just the monastery, it's the quiet corner inside our own minds, inside our own hearts. The corner that knows what's right and what's wrong and doesn't get swayed by things outside. The currents of the world may be flowing north or south or east or west, but you've got to have a quiet corner in your mind that stays still so you can watch what's really good and what's not good, so you can make those distinctions, so you can figure out what in the mind needs to be developed, what needs to be let go. You don't want to just give in to impulses from outside, what other people say. What you hear over the TV, what you read in the newspaper, what, what your friends say, there's no solidity to that at all. Nothing really certain, nothing really reliable. I mean, the stuff on TV, that's something somebody wants us to believe. The same with the stuff you read. Somebody, someplace, wants you to believe this stuff. So how do you know that their intention is good? Well, you don't really know for sure. So you've got to look at the areas where you are responsible and you can know. And it's right here in your own thoughts, your own words, your own deeds. That's where you can be responsible and know for sure what's right and what's wrong, what's skillful and what's not. And yet we don't pay much attention here. The things that we should be responsible for, we forget, we neglect, and get ourselves worked up about things for which we're not responsible in the least bit. So try to develop this little quiet corner in your mind so you can maintain your sanity, keep your senses, as the world around you loses its senses. There are all kinds of crazy things going on. Greed, aversion, and delusion have not gone out of out of fashion, they're still here just as much as they were back in the time of the Buddha. But just as in the time of the Buddha, we also have this opportunity to create this little quiet corner in the mind. This is what we're doing as we meditate. Some little spot inside the body, some little spot inside the mind, where you can resist all the currents of the world, all the ideas of the world, and have your own sense of what really is skillful, what's really not, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and to learn how to delight in developing the good things and in abandoning the, the things that are unskillful. That's a tradition that you want to carry on. This is a tradition that comes from the noble ones. Our parents have taught this as well. And we're going to look to the example of those who really have followed through and, make, and say, okay, human beings can do this. They can develop a true happiness inside. So work on that quiet corner so you can keep that in mind. Don't get swept away by the winds and the currents of the world. Don't let the world invade this little quiet spot. You've got to make this your spot. Where you know what's right, you know what's wrong. And as for things outside, you have to just watch them with a little bit of skepticism, sometimes a lot of skepticism, but don't believe everything. Even though their opinions seem to go along with your opinions, you've got to have a quiet spot where you can step back and look at your opinions, too. Where did you get those? Why do you believe them? Are they really true? Are they really useful? You need this quiet spot in order to tell. So try to make this spot really solid and continuous. Not just here while you're in the quiet corner of the monastery, but maintain your quiet corner everywhere you go. And that way you'll be safe, and that way you'll be carrying on the tradition of the noble ones, trying to develop what's skillful, let go what's not. Delight in doing that as well.